It's about that time of day again, folks. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter, boys and girls. Joseph James here. Thursday evening, January 7th, 2016. Wrapping up the final newsletter of this first full week of the new year, 2016. Happy New Year to you. Hope you guys had a great first week we here with us. Another jam-packed newsletter in store for you guys. Now, heads up, tomorrow is Non-Farm Payroll Friday. That's right, one of the most exciting sessions that we're going to see. But remember, next Monday is Reaction Monday. That's going to also be another huge opportunity for us. So the next couple days, really going to be filled with, as if we haven't seen enough great volatility and opportunities to make a buck here this week already. It's been a crazy week. Without any further delay, we got some. We got a plan for you guys going to non-farm payroll Friday. Crude oil is trading inside a range this evening, which means we're looking for opportunities to buy the lows and sell the highs as we rotate towards the lows of the range tomorrow. we got a very interesting plan for crude tomorrow. Looks like we're setting up for a trading range, and it looks like we're rotating off the highs. i got a plan for both directions for the oil traders tomorrow. The E-mini S&P is bearish with a spike in channel, and we're trading at the lows of a trading range this evening, which tells us to look for selling opportunities after a bullish correction and a possible test of a very long-term bear channel. We get this nice channel high staring us right in the face. We got a plan for the E-mini traders out there tomorrow as well. Gold, the yellow metal is bullish but trading at the highs of a bull channel and with the completion of a wedge breakout and retest, we can expect buyers to take their profit and look to reload again after a bearish correction tomorrow morning. Gold wins the award for the the most the prettiest chart of the week. I mean, this gold market has been incredible this week. Got a great plan for the yellow metal. And of course, we can't forget about the euro. The euro is very, very similar to gold this evening. It's bullish, but it's also trading at the highs of a bull channel. We get a lot of resistance right now on the euro overhead, but we're staring at a big price magnet. We get the 200 moving average. We get a big round number overhead. We have reason to believe we're going to keep going higher here in the medium term on the euro, but we might be in store for a correction at the early part of tomorrow morning. Guys, we got a plan for the oil traders, E-mini, S&P, gold, and the euro. Before we jump into our charts, though, and review our strategies for tomorrow, I do want to remind you guys to make sure you're watching the video on our trading blog here at Sideways Markets. If you're on our YouTube channel right now, there's a link in the description of the YouTube video. Follow that link, and it will take you over here to our trading blog. First of all, if you're not an advanced member and in our trade room as an advanced member, if you'd like a free pass to come out and test drive our live trade room as a guest for a day or maybe a few days, grab your free pass in the upper left-hand corner. In the lower left-hand corner, you can register as a brand new member of our nightly newsletter mailing list. All I need is your name, a real email address, and then make sure you check your inbox. I'm going to send you a verification email to make sure you give me approval to keep sending you emails every evening right about 8 o'clock Eastern time when this newsletter goes live. Right below the video tonight, you'll see a spot to download all the charts that you see me using in tonight's video. How nice is that? Now you can have those charts ready for you to use tomorrow. And then over on the right-hand side, you can learn more about how to register as a trial member, not to be confused with your free pass. Our trial membership will give you a chance to learn all about exactly our trading strategies. You can learn more about our three levels of membership. And don't forget, we always have someone standing by 24-7, 365 to give you guys a hand. Don't be a stranger out there. No question too big or too small. I've always got someone standing by here to help you guys out along the way. Enough of the chit-chat here, JJ. Let's get started here. Tomorrow is Friday, January 8th. That's right. Count them up, kids. It's the first it's the first full week of the month, the first Friday of every one month. Now, some of you might be wondering right now, okay, Joe, the first Friday of every month is non-farm payroll Friday. Well, what about last Friday? Well, there's this little tiny rule that they say, if the first day of the month is a Friday, then it ends up going to the next Friday. So we did actually technically have one Friday, right? That was, of course, New Year's Day, January 1st. If the first day of the month is a Friday, it'll get pushed to the following Friday, right? And, of course, you can see tomorrow, January 8th, a Friday morning. All we have is the employment situation, and that is plenty for us tomorrow. Remember, the non-farm payroll report, right, technically known as the employment situation. This is the biggest news event we get as day traders. Really, it's the biggest news event that everybody gets. And that's why we saw such a slowdown in the afternoon session this afternoon. Right now, all the big asset managers, all the big money managers out there, they're flat waiting for this news event to come out. Here's the rule for tomorrow. Be careful. 
Okay, what I'm going to go over tonight with you on the newsletter are going to be the strategies based on what we know right now. I need you to promise me tomorrow that if this news comes out tomorrow morning at 8.30, I'm going to wait till at least 10 minutes to 15 minutes after that news comes out, let it get all the jitters out of the way, and then we're going to find the direction from there. Now tonight, we have some strong trends on Euro and Gold. We got some ranges on the S&P and Crude. Here's what I need you to be careful about. If we take off to one side or the other tomorrow, I do not want you to try to trade against that direction. This is always the hardest part of my job the night before a big, big news event. FOMC announcements, uh, non-farm payrolls, things like that. The OPEC report, right? These big news events, I can't predict tomorrow. I have no idea what to expect. We're definitely expecting a, a high number, right? Because we saw that leading number from the ADP employment, right? The ADP employment report, the Wednesday before the non-farm payroll number on Friday morning, is a huge heads up. So most likely this market is not going to get caught off guard by, a, by another real strong employment number. What I'm telling you tomorrow is if, I'm, if, I, if I provide you with areas of resistance and we are torching through these resistance areas, I want you to be very, very careful. Do not trade against the momentum tomorrow that comes off this news, okay? And if you don't know what I'm talking about or if you're worried about this, if you come in tomorrow, come out and join me. Our trade room opens up at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. We'll be trading this report tomorrow morning live in real time. You don't need to do this alone. Okay, so if you're brand new at trading, the one thing you got to worry about tomorrow is this big news number, it may start really moving, and whatever you do, don't step in front of that freight train, all right? I'm going to show you an example of this on the S&P. The S&P and crude oil are really the ones that I'm most worried about tomorrow because they've, they've been in a – well, let's take a look. Let's jump right into the charts here, and we'll, we'll talk about what I'm, what I'm referring to, okay? So the one thing you got to be careful tomorrow is around that news from 8.30 to 8.45 – don't step in front of that freight train. Make sure that it all makes sense, right? So I want that news reaction to agree with what I'm showing you here tonight and what the strategy is for tomorrow. We're going to have to be on our on our toes tomorrow morning. You know, keep the old head on the swivel. Keep the eyes open tomorrow morning because that news is going to be, well, again, it's the biggest, most powerful news that we get. Let's jump into the crude. We'll go crude. S&P, gold, and euro. The oil market trading inside a range this evening, which means we'll be looking for opportunities to buy lows and sell highs as we rotate towards the lows tomorrow, right? So we're coming off the highs, and we're looking to rotate down, right, to complete the rotation target below. Now, the sell-off that started this session, right, that sell-off that started this session was quickly reversed on strong buying, right? We made our money today buying it on the way up. But the bulls failed to break a new high. What happened up here, right? The bulls failed to break a new high and then immediately turned back lower, which suggests the bulls got out and sellers took back control. Now, in the short term, we have a bearish wedge. Now, you guys watch my newsletter every evening. Earlier this week, we talked about these wedges. What directional bias does a bearish wedge give me? It's a bullish directional bias. So in the short term, this bearish wedge tells us to expect buyers to make a run back at the highs and why sellers will be watching for them to fail. Because remember, we're rotating from the high down to the low. So if this, oh, sorry for the white out there. Sorry about that. If we do see this wedge, you can see here, right? So bear wedge, look for a break towards those highs, and then look for the sellers, right, or the buyers try to buy that pullback, and then, of course, we'll be looking for them to fail. Really, for the most part, until we see these buyers break higher and then hold a pullback, we're looking for whatever opportunities we can to get in on the sell side and complete that rotation target right now. Okay. If we test the highs, we'll be watching for the bulls to hold or fail. Let's play that game. What if price goes higher? What if price goes lower? First of all, if price goes lower, that's exactly what is pretty much expected in the medium term here on the oil market for tomorrow. We'll be looking to sell retracements and, of course, catch those buyers on the wrong side of the market as they try to pick those bottoms. 
If we get down to those lows, then we look for evidence of seller failure to buy the lows and send it back higher. So if we go lower, we're looking to sell those rips on the way down. And then once we get down, tag your it. We then look for a buying opportunity down at these lows using a seller failure. Remember, the name of the game when it comes to ranges is failure patterns. Seller failures to buy the lows, buyer failures to sell the highs, and then off we go back to the highs. Remember, they are going to do everything they can to get down to that 3230 area to finish the job off before they try to take this thing back higher again. Now, what if they can't get down to rotation? What if they can't get down to that 3230? Because this is a really big, important part of trading inside of a range. I'm going to give them two tries. Once, twice, if they can't get down and tag that low before they shoot higher, possibly into the news tomorrow morning, that's a huge clue, and we call that failed rotation. Failed rotation leads to the pendulum swing in the opposite direction. What happens is, if these sellers try once, they try twice, and they can't get down to that low, the buyers will see it as weakness, the sellers will bail, and this is very likely to make a run up towards that 35, because it's going to initially try to go back to that high, 34.26, but remember, if we fail to rotate to one side, the pendulum overcorrects, we're going to go easily back to 34.26, but you definitely want to be looking at that point now for a measured move target up around that 35. So as we go lower, if we make the completion down to that low, look for sellers to try and fail to buy that low. The target after we hit the low is back to the high. If we get to the high, then the target's back to the low, and we're looking for failure patterns. If they go lower, but we can't, after two attempts, get down to test that rotation target, that becomes a very, very bullish clue, and we're looking for the pendulum to swing now with the two-try rule. 34.26, the opposite side of that range, is the short-term target, and then, of course, we're looking at targets overhead, most likely up around that 35, and maybe, remember we got non-farms tomorrow, I've got a huge resistance zone up top here at 36. we got some unfilled gaps, some previous highs, that's going to be a juicy target for all the aggressive buyers if we get the personality to confirm for us tomorrow. What if price goes higher? Well, if price goes higher, we're definitely going to be looking for those pullbacks to fail because, again, we've already tested the high. So now the objective is to finish the rotation back to the lows. When we get up to the high, we'll look again for pullbacks to fail so we can sell that high and have a target back down at that low. This is where it gets tricky. If we get back to the high, though, and the buyers can hold that pullback, now we know Look for that ABCD, measured move completion, right? And we're gunning for we're gunning for a retest, of course, of 34 of 26, right? But more importantly, up around that 35, and then again up up to that 36, even that resistance zone overhead. The most important thing right now for tomorrow on the crude traders. Be careful around that non-farm payroll number. And again, like I said before, if this thing is moving like a crazy animal tomorrow morning off that news, do not, do not step in front of that trade train. Promise me you're going to be careful with that tomorrow right when that news comes out. Let's keep moving. Get a plan for the crude. How about the E-mini traders out there? The E-mini S&P. The S&P is bearish. We have a spike in channel and a trading range this, this evening. There's your spike in channel. Right? Spike in channels are strength patterns. We know to expect a correction back to the base of that channel before the price comes lower. We also have what appears to be a bit of a trading range here. I was a little bit on the fence of whether or not I wanted to call this a trading range. But you can definitely see, though, there's definitely a bottom, a top, and then back to the bottom. And look what you're seeing right now. Sellers try once. They try twice. You know where their stops are going to be. If you were a seller right now, where would your stop be? It'd be right about here. So that's where we're going to start seeing some stops get run, and that's where the buyers right, will be entering the market trying to get this price to go higher. So two major components here. We have our bear spike in channel and our trading range. Okay, Now, we are at the lows of the trading range this evening, which tells us to look for selling opportunities after a bullish correction and a possible test of that long-term channel high. Here's this long-term channel high. 
right? As you can see, we got this long-term channel. You can go back a few days, the beginning of the week, and draw it right off the highs, and that easily lines up. Now, here's something interesting. What happened here? No test of the high, right? Now, remember, channels act just like ranges. Remember we talked about range rotation? Well, same thing. High, down to the low, low up to the, yeah, see, they missed it. Now, this could definitely be just a lot of bearishness, but it could also be some unfinished business here. Now, when you combine all of these clues together, the lack of rotation at the highs, the fact that we're down at the lows of that trading range, and the fact that we have this bearish spike in channel, the spike in channel tells us to expect a bullish correction before we go lower. The low of that trading range tells us you're going to see sellers taking profit and the bulls buying the lows. All of that tells us to expect the price to go higher. Now, again, we're going into that big news report tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. That's the big variable right now. But assume now, with take the news out of the equation, we push back up to the highs of that channel you know what the sellers are looking for. They're looking for that pullback to fail so they can sell it. They're going to be selling the test of the spike in channel. They're going to be selling the test of the overall major bear channel. And ultimately, what we'd really love to see is to see failed rotation. Remember that on crude oil? Here's my trading range. Think about rotation. We go from the low up to the high. We go from the high down to the low. The fact that they actually tested that low tells us they did their job, and now they're going to try to run it back to the high. What's going to happen if they can't get to that high? We try once. We try twice. What happens if we fail at that point now? The pendulum's going to swing, right? The sellers are going to see this as a huge amount of weakness, the buyers are going to get run out of this trade, and they're probably going to give up on it. And where is it going to go now? It's going to overcompensate, right? The pendulum, just like we talked about on crude oil, right? Pendulum swings down. Pendulum swings up. If it can't finish the swing, they're going to see it as weakness, and it's going to be aggressively attacked, and you want to look for that measured move on the way down possibly, possibly down. We get a 1900 big round number down here. This is the range expansion for tomorrow, right? That's a 100% that's a range expansion down to 1896. We'll call it 1897, dot the I and cross the T. So what I'm thinking right now is, is that if we can't get the rotation back to that high, if it can't get the job done, Tries once, tries twice, and can't get it done, be ready for those sellers to attack. Targets down below, of course, will be at that measured move. And, of course, that big round number lines up just perfectly with that range expansion. Okay? If we do happen to get all the way back up to the high, look for the buyers to fail at the high and sell the high with a target back down to the low. We get down to the low, sellers to fail, buy the lows, back to the high. If we do happen to really run tomorrow, we have another major resistance area just below that 2,000. That's what the buyers will be looking for. And then, of course, we'll look for them, of course, right, to fail and look for the next selling opportunity to bring it back down. Guys, got a great plan on the S&P tomorrow. Remember, only thing we got to worry about tomorrow is that 8.30 a.m. non-farm payroll number. Don't you dare trade into that freight train tomorrow morning if it takes off like a wild animal. Now, Moving on here from the equities to the gold. The yellow metal is bullish, but trading at the highs of a bull channel. And with the completion of a, of a wedge breakout and retest, we can expect buyers to take profit and look to reload again after a bearish correction tomorrow morning. Our goal is to buy the lows of the bull channel, but the completion of the wedge tells us to expect a fake out at the lows, so we'll wait for the sellers to try and sell it lower, and if they fail, remember, that's the key word, if they fail, we'll be looking to buy into their stops for another attempt back to the highs. Now, guys, this is a market that has been remarkably bullish this week. 
we're expecting a very strong number from the non-farm payrolls, which means for this price to keep going higher as aggressively as it's gone, the market is going to have to laugh in the face of this high number tomorrow. They're expecting a real strong non-farm payroll number. How do I know that? Because the Wednesday ADP employment number was also very strong, and usually that's a pretty accurate leading indicator for the Friday non-farm payroll. Remember, gold is a rainy day market. It's a shelter market. Right, all the chaos in China, all the bickering in the Middle East right now, right, is all kind of fanning this fear flame for these gold traders right now, and that's what's caused it to go higher. We get a long distance to go tomorrow before we even get close to that big round number at 1,200. Right, we're just around that 1,100 right now. So, really, right now, the main thing we're looking at here is, I think we've got. Now, three ba three basic components here. First of all, you've got your major channel. We're right up around the highs, right? We're definitely bullish, but I can't buy the high of that channel. I want to buy after a correction back to those lows, right? So stay patient on that. And then here's a really interesting, interesting scenario here. Here we have a price wedge with three pushes, a break and a retest. Now, if anybody traded the euro with us today, the euro gave us exactly that. Remember that last night how I said the euro looked for that break and retest of that wedge? If you watched last night's newsletter and if you followed along today on the euro futures contract, you saw exactly what we had anticipated in last night's video. This is another example of it, right? Look what happens. We break down after the third push and then look where we end up, almost as if it was tied right to a string. This is exactly the textbook situation for what you'd expect to see on a wedge. You see the three pushes, the aggressive breakdown, right? Look at how fun this is, right? Just kind of run some stops here, just says, okay, see you suckers, and then right back up. That is classic scenario for a final push higher, right? Almost as if to spike the football right at the end of that move higher. Now, bottom line is whether you're a bull or a bear, we know right now we're at the highs. We've got measured moves. This is actually a triple symmetrical move higher here today into the bull channel. So very difficult to be a buyer right now. Really the only way that I can be a buyer right now is if we see this thing react bullishly. And then I focus on simply selling or buying into seller failure. The only way you want to be a buyer up in the nosebleed seats right now is if you see it jump up, sellers will enter the market trying to sell it short. If they fail, then I can buy into their failure. Everything else is very, very dangerous. The ideal here now is, is to wait for price to get back down to those lows. And then because of all the scenarios here, and mainly because of this wedge, because of this wedge completion up here, I'm expecting a lot of traders to see that right now. So what I would guess for tomorrow, again, pending the reaction to that news report tomorrow is, is a move lower on profit taking. Right, dig into some of these lows, run some of these buyers out of the market, make them get back in again. The sellers are going to try to sell the next retracement. They might be successful, but if they're not successful, that's going to be my clue now to get long buying right into those stop losses because if I can buy into the stops of the sellers, then we have both the bulls and the bears buying, and that is just way too good to be true. Right, So look for that correction lower and then look for the sellers to fail. Now, if the sellers are successful, if we break lower and the sellers, if they keep holding these pullbacks, you've got plenty of room to wait patiently for it. What's going to happen is those sellers, they're going to run for these stops. Right, See a little fake break of these low, right? fake break of the low, and then look for them to fail. So bottom line is if we see strong sellers, keep an eye out for these swing lows if you're a buyer with me here tomorrow. Look for them to fake break the low, fail on the retracement, right? Just stay patient if you're a bull, right, as we go lower for tomorrow. And do not trade into that news report tomorrow. What time is it? It was at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, now, almost a carbon copy of the gold. The only thing missing with this is we've traded out the wedge with a trading range, Right? See how the gold's very similar? We're right up around the highs. So the euro is bullish, but trading at the highs of a bull channel and into the completion of a measured move, which tells us to look for buying opportunities after a bearish correction. Same, same strategy as we had for gold. 
Our plan for tomorrow is to wait for the correction off the highs and then look for sellers to fail so we can buy into their stops with a target up around the round number of 1,000. If the sellers can hold the next pullback, the bulls will need to be patient and wait for those bears to take it lower. Exact same scenario we talked about on the gold. Here we have the components right now. Three components on this. First of all, we have the bull channel. We're right up around the highs of that bull channel. If we happen to take off to the upside tonight because there's a big, juicy price magnet waiting for us, we've got some unfilled gaps, some previous highs, a big round freaking number up there, right? Lots of reasons why price is going to want to get up there and retest that big round number. So if we don't come down and get a chance to buy that low, what do we do? Well, it's going to jump up. It'll, be, it'll, it'll feel too good to be true for the buyers. They'll take their profit. Sellers will try to sell that high, and that's where you want to sell, or that's sorry, that's where you want to buy into those failure targets, right? Those, those failure stops for the sellers. The best idea here is going to be to get that measured correction, A, B, C, D, back down into that low, then look for buying opportunities, right? There's a couple of ways we can buy that low. We can buy it on seller failure. We can wait for the turn and then buy those dips. Or we can look for a straight reversal pattern and simply buy it on the reversal pattern. Bottom line is we know where the most reliable trades are going to be here for the Euro traders. Now, if the sellers hold it, right? Remember we talked about this on gold? If they do hold it, just stay patient because they're probably going to be running for stops down around this 0856, 0860, right? So stay patient if the sellers can hold those can hold those retracements here. And if you are a bear right now, just make sure you're aware of these support zones that I have listed below and just make sure you're not selling into those support zones here tomorrow on the euro. Remember, we got a big news event tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Be careful until 8.45. And if we do see this thing turn into a freight train tomorrow, don't you dare trade against that trend tomorrow morning. right? Be careful out there. And again, like I said, you don't have to do this alone. Come out and join me tomorrow. Trade Room opens up at 8 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. And don't forget, I don't do this newsletter on Friday afternoon. Believe it or not, they do let me out of this cage every once in a while. I'll be having, I'll be having uh, a glass of a glass of red wine and and hopefully a a great dinner with my wife and family tomorrow afternoon instead. So no newsletter tomorrow night. Next newsletter will be on Monday, Monday through Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We publish our nightly newsletter. But I will see you guys tomorrow morning as advanced members in our live trade room. We're kicking it off at 8 a.m. Eastern Time and that major news at 8.30. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for giving me some feedback. Send me email feedback to JJ at School of Trade. Give me a like on the YouTube video. Don't forget to share this video with a friend, right? Don't hog all the great information for yourself now and come out and see me tomorrow as a brand new student. I'm out of here for now. If I don't see you tomorrow, have a great weekend. I'll be back on Monday with a newsletter. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other and be here tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.